requirements for IB Chemistry Standard Level and Higher Level. IB Chemistry is a very rigorous course. It is one of the more difficult IB subjects and it is important that students have met these entry requirements in order to be successful on the course. As you can see, they do require maths as well as high grades in the science, in chemistry or in science double award. This is because the amount of maths involved compared to GCSE is a huge step up. So we need to ensure that the students have sufficient mathematical skills to be able to access all the topics throughout the course. So here you can see the topics that are involved um, in the standard level and in the higher level course. So whether students are standard level or higher level, they will all begin by learning the standard level units and then they will build, if they are a HL student, they will build on these in year 13. The HL units do link to their previous standard level units. So for example, topic 12, atomic structure builds on topic two. Topic 13 um, will build on the periodicity from topic three and so on. Um, as they finish their course content, they will study an option and this is for their paper three exam. There are four different options, materials, biochemistry, energy and medicinal chemistry. The students just um, learn one of the options. They don't learn all four, they just learn one. And that is the section that they will complete on their paper three exam. So as well as the theoretical side of IB chemistry, there is a practical element as well. So alongside the theoretical units, we will teach practical work. It is embedded into the course. Students are expected to complete 40 hours of practical work if they are standard level students and 60 hours of practical work if they are higher level students. So this will take place in their normal lessons when they are learning the unit. For example, if they are doing a stoichiometry calculation, they can look at this from the viewpoint of a titration reaction. And when they're looking at esters in organic chemistry, they will do an esterification reaction practically to support their learning. This will then allow the students to complete their IA, which is their individual project where they have to think of a question it can be any question as long as it is related to chemistry and to their studies and they have to investigate this question so they have to plan the question plan the investigation the methodology research around the background of it then once they have um, thought of their question and they've got their background research and they plan their method they will then carry this out in the in the lab which should take around 10 hours and then they will analyze these results and conclude and evaluate so these are building on their inquiry skills that we've taught them at GCSE and this will account for 20% of their final grade. So this slide just summarises the exams and how the students are assessed. There are three papers, whether they are standard level or higher level. The higher level, it obviously has longer papers and worth more marks because obviously they are studying more units but the structure is the same. So they both, whether they're standard or higher level, do a paper one, which is multiple choice questions on the whole of the, the core content. Paper two is then short answer questions and some extended response questions, again, on their core topics. And if they are higher level, they're additional higher level topics. So paper one and paper two, if they are standard level, will assess 11 topics. If they are higher level, will assess 21 topics. Their paper three is then their option paper where they study one option unit and the first 15 marks of this paper will be data response questions and practical based questions. So these are skill based questions from the skills they have developed throughout the course. The next or the last 20% of the weighting of the final grade is given to their IA, which is their coursework. So just like with GCSE, we teach in topics. So at the, at the start of the course, students can expect to have topic tests as they complete topics. This is similar to GCSE and the students will be familiar with this type of assessment in science. As they progress towards the end of year 12, they will do a full end of year 12 mock exam. Because we teach all the standard level course in year 12, the end of year 12 mock exam will be a paper one and a paper two with the full standard level specification examined, so all 11 topics. 
This gives us a good idea for predicted grades, so it is important that students revise and prepare thoroughly for this. So that we can support students in preparing for this end of year 12 mock exam, we do run a pre-mock, which is about two months before their end of year 12 exam, just to give them an experience of a paper one and a paper two, so they know how to develop and how to practice further before their end of year 12 mock exam. Then, the year th when they move into year 13, their mock exam will again take place. This will be a paper one and a paper two. This is usually in January, and that's important in preparation for their final exams. It's important to note that obviously these ex assessments are fairly spread out throughout the year, and as we approach the pre-mock and the end of year 12 mock exam, topic tests will stop, and the focus then shifts to the pre-mock and the end of, end of year 12 exam. So they won't have the pre-mock and the end of 12 year exam, as well as having topic tests. The topic tests are at the start of the year, when they've only done a few topics, then that builds into a pre-mock, and then the final year 12 exam. And then in year 13, again, that will be the final um, year 13 mock exam. When they get to pre-mocks and end of year 12 mocks, it obviously will be lots of different topics assessed at once. It won't just be individual topic tests. And the topic tests that the students do, do build up as well. So for example, in the first topic, they'll set a topic one test, then they might complete topic two. That topic two test will also have questions from topic one, because it is important that the tests are cumulative and the students don't just revise a topic at a time and forget prior content. So we teach IB chemistry in a variety of ways. So we teach with practical, practical work embedded into the theoretical units, as explained before. Um, this is in, adopted into an inquiry-based approach that students are building on their inquiry skills and planning investigations themselves, analysing and concluding on results, because obviously they need these skills for their independent coursework, which is 20% of their final grade. We encourage our students to be independent learners. There will be times where they will be using things such as Cognity and online textbook in lessons, or will be asked to do some independent research on a particular unit. They will also use online simulations to make more abstract concepts come to life. And they will do lots of problem solving, lots of examples, particularly with the mathematical units. They will also be required to do lots of past exam questions, both inside and outside of class in order to prepare them for their assessments and to ensure they are assessing their learning and revising as they go throughout the course. And there is also some aspects of flipped learning where the students might be required to watch a video tutorial or complete some prior reading before a lesson as part of their homework. 